Will you see snow heading into November? The odds are probably not, but let's look at where the chances are over the next couple of weeks. This is the potential of seeing more than an inch of snow looking at the European Ensemble guidance through the Wednesday the 29th, the best chance will be across the West. Look what happens as we head now into the weekend, th Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. There's a small chance here showing up across the Appalachians. We've been talking about that for a while now. It's pushed kind of into that Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday time frame. But look what happens as we now head into Friday the 7th and the 8th. Okay, I know it's really far out. We're taking it pretty far down the road. This is looking at more than 50 members of the European. Odds are growing here into the east with some colder air moving into this part of the country. Yeah, likely not seeing no any snow across the southern plains, the central U.S., and yeah, more snow across the Pacific Northwest. It is so dry across the southwest with this La Nina type setup. I don't think there's really any precipitation on the way for you guys in the near term, maybe even medium to long range. Below average temperatures expected across the east, also across the northwest, moving through the Rockies, and look at what's happening across Oklahoma, Texas, down into the deep south. The heat is gone. We're going to get a good push of some cool air as we head toward Wednesday, Thursday, and that moves into the southeast. And we've talked about a cold start to November, temperatures well below average across the deep south along the Gulf Coast, and then that starts to move east, so temperatures five to almost 10 degrees below average in some spots that modifies some as we head into the fourth fifth and the sixth but two systems that are going to impact a good part of the southeast also potentially the northeast with some cooler temperatures warmer than average with strong southerly flow across the central plains into parts of canada and then there is some cold air that's lurking it's up here it's across alaska we tap into some of that as we head into monday that gets pulled south and we'll zoom in a little bit closer, a few flakes of snow trying to mix in on the backside of this across parts of Nebraska, maybe even Kansas. Certainly not a big snow or anything, but maybe a few flakes flying here in late October. A couple of systems to watch out in the Atlantic too. Melissa here across the Caribbean, a surface low developing just off the northeast coast. Strong winds moving in around this, so some big surf possible, maybe even some coastal flooding concerns as we head through this week. And then as we head into Wednesday, we're watching this cold pocket of air drive east it stalls. It gets really cut off. Now, the last couple of days, if I go back to last week, the models were taking this low, slowing things down, connecting it with this pocket of cold air, then blowing up a huge coastal storm. We still get a pretty decent area of low pressure developing, but it really gets split here. You start to see surface low pressure transition to the coast, the cold pool of air back across the southern Appalachians, and that could mix some rain with snow Wednesday night, Thursday into Thursday night in the highest elevations, and the GFS tries to put some snow here into the mountains of the Northeast. A massive storm, again, moving into the Gulf of Alaska. A parade of storms, one, two, three, this upcoming week. More rain, more wind, more snow on the way, and some much colder temperatures dropping into the teens, and that cold air is just going to lurk. We're starting to get really cold here, and it is very cold up across Greenland. Look at how strong this surface high is just setting across this land mass of ice. It's really cold here right now. I know it's always cold in Greenland, but it's very cold. And that's a strong area of high pressure developing across the high, high latitudes. Heading into next week, when you look at the GFS operational, it's going to swing wildly. Cold air still north up into Canada. A lot of chances for snow, I think, up into the Canada over the next couple of weeks. And then we start to turn stormy. Now, today's GFS has done a big change. Okay, instead of driving an eastern trough, it actually develops a lot of southwesterly flow heading into the 8th and the 9th. Yesterday's runs were drastically different. This is yesterday. You had more of a flat setup and a pretty good storm moving through the Great Lakes and then dropping that cold air south and running storms along that. Today's setup, again, we're looking out over a week and a half now. I'm just going to tell you, I don't believe in anything that it's saying. I'm not letting go of the idea that there could still be some cold air and some big storms heading into November. But let's look at the short range. This is where things are starting to grow in confidence, and that's the way things are going to evolve across the central plains with this rain moving east, cold, and a few snow showers and flurries hanging on into the mountains through Tuesday. And then this cold air drops to the south. The European is what I'm showing you now. It's not nearly as cold, and I want to show you because this right here will not show any snow mixing in into the mountains. But again, when I go back to the European Ensemble Guidance, which takes all of those 50 members and it averages it out, Look, it has a chance of some snow over the next several weeks across the east with some colder temperatures. Snow is going to fly across the west. Some of the snow could be heavy. We've already seen most of the heavy snow, but another round 
heading into Wednesday and Thursday into the mountains of British Columbia and the Canadian Rockies with wind, rain, and snow. That all plows east. More wind and snow, too, across parts of British Columbia, but most of that north of the lower 48. More rain and snow into the Pacific Northwest by next weekend, and look how dry it is just staying across the southwest. Temperatures cooling down across the northern Rockies, also into the plains. You can see that cold push heading into Tuesday, really starting to move down into Texas. High temperatures go back into the 50s, 40s too, and then that really pushes south into Texas as we move into Wednesday. High temperatures likely staying near 60 for places like Dallas, San Antonio barely making it to 70, and then further to the north, quite cool temperatures, at least into the afternoon, in the 40s, brisk. Here's a look at the precipitation in this area over the next couple of days. There comes the rain moving across Kansas, also into Nebraska. Some cold air behind this, trying to mix a little bit of snow in by Tuesday. That drives off to the east, and look how this cold air cuts off. There it goes. Strong low pressure moving across Missouri. I think it's going to get windy. It's going to be rainy. It's going to be cool. I think it's going to be a little too warm for any snow, but once this kicks to the mountains... That's where you get into the elevation issue and you start to see that chance of snow developing in the highest peaks of the southern and central Appalachians. Look how that cold air moves south into all the way to the Gulf Coast by Wednesday and then into Thursday. The 90s are gone, my friends. We're in the mid-70s across South Texas. It's about time, say many of you here on the channel. I see your comments. I feel what you're saying. Across the south, rain chances increasing as we head into Sunday night into Monday. Cool across the northeast, maybe even a few snowflakes mixing into the parts of uh, in parts of Maine at the highest elevations, and then that moves away, and then surface low pressure develops off the coast. This is just a weird setup. You've got this cold pocket of air just setting up here across the northeast, and now another one pinwheeling around it. Interesting to see how all this evolves. This is a really strange pattern we're in. Here comes that cold pocket of air. This is a closer look at your surface low developing in response, a bit of a trough here. You've got a lot of divergence here, and that's that wind moving away, and that's helping drive surface low pressure developing underneath it. As that air gets evacuated aloft, it gets replaced at the surface. You get a lot of rising motion, and then surface low pressure develops. On the backside, cold, and uh, maybe some snow into the highest peaks here into western North Carolina, southwest Virginia, parts of West Virginia through the week, especially Thursday night into Friday at least at this point. This is the GFS, and that moves further to the northeast here into the higher elevations of western and central Pennsylvania, western New York. Too warm, I think, here into the lower elevations, getting down towards Erie, Buffalo, Rochester, probably too warm, but get up into the higher elevations, maybe a little bit of snow, the Adirondacks, the Catskills, and then to the Green and the White Mountains. That moves away, heading into the weekend. We turn much colder into the northeast, and then another piece of energy. This has been showing up for the last couple of days, it's trying to almost show up like a clipper system. I don't know. Today looks a lot different, but cold, showery, could be rain and snow, could be lake effect. We're looking into next weekend, a long way before we iron this out. And again, today's GFS drastically different than yesterday's. More to come.